Hey everyone, uh, as you see, the setup looks a little different today. Uh, we're going to be trying something a little new. I uh, finally got through the headache of getting all this to work right to have my my DAW of choice, FL Studio, don't judge me, up while having the, the camera as well so you can see me. And I'm going to do sort of a, you know, process thing to, uh, maybe you see up there in the title, Able Sisters. I'm going to do... Able sister. So this is behind the cheese, a title I made up just now, because I have problems. Anyway, we're gonna get right into it. Uh, so yeah, here we are, Able Sisters. Uh, we got got a lot of tracks here. There was a lot of different takes. I mean, although although in the video I do it all, it, you know, it looks like I do it all in one take. I don't. You know, I'll be real. I don't. Uh, there's a lot of instruments in here, so I guess we'll start with, this is one of the few things, like, one of the fewest, I guess, amount of patterns I've had for a song. I just kind of, normally I transcribe things, unless it's, like, something really easy, and I don't bother with it. Like, this, I think, is really easy. It's a simple, just 1-4, you know, G to C, and then it's 1-4, four, 5-4 four chord progression, and... So I just got a MIDI file of it, which you can transfer, you can import right into FL Studio. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I did that, and I pretty much just went through and separated all the parts, because it was all, it was all just default on a piano. So from there, I just did the, did the arranging, you know, took the bass parts, dun, 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 and put it on a bass, put all the notes in a bass, put all the, the off, the off key note, off key. What am I talking about? The off beat, the off beat notes I put on a acoustic guitar and acoustic guitar grammar. And then I went through and I pretty much just replaced every instrument with the instrument I wanted to use. I pretty much, I have it all. Where is it? I need to get, well, you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. But anyway, I had this notepad file where I pretty much, I learned in a, in a composition lesson from one of my mentors that to make a, a sort of plot plot line of sorts, an outline for your whole chart. And when I say chart plot, I mean pretty much putting in in words uh, exactly a beginning, middle, and end of what you want to do with your with your song, with your chart per se, um, including the instrumentation, which is really really helpful. For arranging and composing, it can work either way. So that's, I guess, a little tip that I could give you. Um, might throw them every now and then. So anyway, let's just go ahead and get right into it. Let's go ahead and listen to the first part. Okay, so that pretty much staying true to how the original is, for the most part, you know, except with real instruments instead of MIDI stuff, how Animal Crossing is. Excuse me. So, I just have the bass going, I have the acoustic guitar on the off beats, and piano and ocarina on unison on the melody, which I thought was a cool idea. And you may notice there's no uh, reverb, because my reverb effects on the instruments that do have reverb has been kind of glitching out when I'm doing this so I'm just gonna leave it out for this for now every once in a while it'll do that and for the ocarina parts that took a lot of takes not only to get the mic positioning right because I've never recorded ocarina before but here here's the ocarina I used and it's a 12 hole ocarina and the first note the E is just pinky, just pinky. No thumb holes either, so you kind of have to find a place for them. And you also have to, or at least for me, and I've looked this up, that you have to kind of lean into your chest to make the high notes in tune. So, you know, etc. So, sorry if that was loud. So, yeah, that was interesting to do. Piano, you know. Play piano all the time, bass, blah, blah, blah. 
Anyway, the second part sort of goes into an accordion. It trades off to the accordion for the second part of the melody. <laughs> So yeah, and keen ears might also notice that there were some key clicks in the accordion track, which kind of annoyed me, but I got it to a point where it wasn't too obvious, so I just left it in. I don't know how accordion players record their instrument on a microphone, honestly, so I just kind of guessed, but I think it sounded all right. And then it goes right into the, the you know, how it goes into a rock hit and it goes sort of jinty, punk, metal, blah, blah, blah stuff. And here it is. I have a, kind of a volume, a like slow volume up knob on guitar effect that leads right into it. So here I have the drums and there is, you know, some pretty cool fills, which I can't probably, I probably cannot play those on actual drums. I can play drums, sort of, but I don't own a drum set. I don't have the miking for a drum set. I don't even have an electric drum set. So I, get away, cat. Cat, go away, go away, go away. Okay. Sorry. Um. So yeah, I just use this uh, drum, virtual drum set, which re sounds really good, as you probably have heard. Um, melodies on the guitar you know, bass kind of doing more of a just tonic thing. Same with, same with the guitar notes. Uh, then it sort of transitions into a jinty thing. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much just extending the melody, kind of building it up towards what I originally envisioned for the melody to sound like with this instrumentation, which is like this. Yeah, so pretty cool. Um, the first thing I thought I composed or whatever for this was the drum beat itself. I <clears throat> I finally settled on something that was pretty syncopated-ish, you know, kind of funky in a way. And really, to me, it lended itself to something more fusion-y, prog-like or whatever. Uh so instead of just doing same like lame old power chords, I decided to make a really involved kind of counter melody almost uh, rhythm part. So I think I think that worked out really well for me. And of course, I did the Avenged Sevenfold kind of a dueling or not dueling dual dual guitar thing. Yeah. Uh, so then I thought it was obvious to that there's the part of the melody we haven't heard yet. The very last little interlude part, bridge or whatever you want to call it, that transitions back to the beginning of the melody. And I thought I would do that right before the solo. And then solo. <laughs> if you heard that techno kick, it's because I replaced something so it wouldn't lag as much. Uh, so don't don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, then there is the solo, which I guess we'll just play through.
yeah, so that is the solo. That was an absolute bitch to record. Uh, so let's go over it. First, I'll need a guitar. There we go. Anyway, <clears throat> so sorry if you can't hear this. I tried hooking my pedal up and everything, but if you can't, uh, Mike will probably at least pick up the the strings. But So, let me grab a pick here. Just to kind of run y'all through it, uh, the beginning of the solo, I decided to quote the melody, which is a, in my opinion, a very good thing to do. Uh, especially with things like this, like arrangements. So, you know, the melody. I decided to do a little, like a grace note and some more staccato and kind of syncopated version of it with space at the end. So just... And it just trails off. Um, and space is another important thing, I think, for solos in particular. Very important. Uh, you know, if you're just sitting here... You know, it's not, that's not music. That's not, that's not anything. Uh, and Lord knows I was very uh, guilty of that early on. But it's something you learn in time. Uh... Yeah, so then I go right into this sort of crazy, weird kind of riff. And that, I, I fucked that up so much. But, and that was the main, this was the main thing that screwed me up when I was trying to record this solo. I messed it up so much. Uh, so now I think I can play it better because I've just had to do it so much. Uh, but it's a constant motion thing, you know, it's, it's out of key, for sure, like, that's in key, with that, but then, we're completely out at that point, but the reason it works is because it catches, it still, it still keeps you in because it's a constant pattern and constant, it's the repetition that keeps you there. Even though I'm screwing up sometimes. Uh, so, and I'm also allowed this freedom because I decided not to go with having... It was just drums and guitar at the beginning. No chords. So I can basically do whatever I want. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, so I decided to go with that. And I got it about here, you know. And I was like, huh. I did, Like, in my head, I just heard the... I heard the chords C minor to B minor and I was like that's really cool you know it kind of it's kind of jazzy fusiony ish so I added those chords over it I was like okay I'm just gonna roll with this see where it goes and all of a sudden we're all of a sudden we're in B minor land going doing this kind of really weird switch into tapping in the middle of picking and stuff like that. Um, and I added a space right there, too. An odd amount of space, too. But uh, we were about to... The bass is about to come in, which means we got to get back to reality, back to back to G major. So, so I did this weird kind of triad to lead into it. Since we were already at just weirdo land, I was like, well, might as well button it with another weird thing. And then the wham pedal comes in, which I don't have plugged up because it's annoying to have all these amps together. I don't have a pedal board or anything. So, but yeah, that's the, that's what does the octave up thing is the whammy pedal. And that's, it's really fun to mess around with. And I use it like three times in this, I think. So anyway, whammy, whammy pedal. And then I kind of take a break by doing just some simple... And then that is right when the beat, you know, picks up again. <clears throat> so it comes back in with the sort of thing. So it's really driving, really 16th note driven. And so I just decided to copy that, but just make it into my own line. 
if I can do it. Whammy pedal again. Bend. And then I actually quoted the melody again. This time it's a little uh, ambiguous. You don't really... Most people probably wouldn't catch it, I doubt. Because it's only the first three notes. But I do it on the same string to transition to the tapping part. Yeah. And then that goes right into the... That that other part of the... the whatever you call it. The bridge. Thing. Stuff. Words. I can't make words today. Um, which I took it literally, I took the chords literally and just kind of put them into power chords and I got this. So that kind of sounds evil to me, you know? So I was like, wow, that's, that's really interesting. So I'm going to keep that. And I did. And it kind of lends itself to a diminished sort of diminished riffs going over it so i was like hell yeah and that's right when it right when it goes there and then i do this cool kind of arpe arpeggio thing i thought of and then that goes into the probably craziest riff in this which i still can't do all that well but it it's another diminished thing and has a little mini sweep so it's kind of like this ah. and went way pedal again Whee! and then it pretty much sustains from there um so yeah that's that after the solo um yeah it does the sustain thing right there uh, I thought it'd be really funny to just uh, go straight from from that to just write where it began just seamlessly So that's that. I decided to end it with that nice major seven chord, but uh, on a, on acoustic, of course. Um, but yeah. So uh, I guess that's it. That that is Able Sisters, and this is this was behind the cheese. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I'm I'm sure I'll do more of these. Hopefully, with less do 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 stuttering and pausing everywhere. Maybe I'll actually have like an English language with me, but. Yeah, stay tuned for more stuff. I got a new collaboration cover coming your way, as well as some original stuff. So I'm excited for that. Uh, until then, take care. Mm -hmm.